This is half past paper, week 18, foundation tier. It is a calculator paper, so grab your calculator if you haven't got one. And we're just going to go through these topics, so all the even numbers this week. Week 17 last week was all the odd numbers of this past paper. So we tend to do odds one week, even the next, and then that should be about half a past paper. Those are all the topics. So let's go. Question number two, work out a third of 24. Now, when you want a fraction of a number, you divide by the bottom and then times that answer by the top. So divide by the bottom, and that would be eight in this case, 24 divided by three is eight, and then whatever that answer is, you times it by the top. But in this case, we just wanted one lot of eight, so eight would be your answer. A third of something is the same as dividing by three. Question number four, work out 2.5 squared. Now we do have a calculator for this, so you can just type this in your calculator and you can use that squared button. But if you would um, like to type it out as a sum or do it, then you need to remember that 2.5 squared is 2.5 times by itself. 2.5 times 2.5. Typing that in my calculator, I get 6.25. So that would be your answer for one mark. Question number six, the graph shows some information about car production in the UK over eight years. For how many of these years was car production more than 1.4 million? So we can see on the y-axis here that car production is in millions. So 1.4 million is here. How many years were we above that? Well, one, two, three, four, five of those years. So five is going to be my answer there. In which two years was car production the same? That's going to be these two years because those bars are level. So we're going to put five and six, years five and year six. That's the only two bars that are the same. And that's it. Question number eight. Kareem buys 200 tiles. The tiles are sold in boxes. There are 25 tiles in each box and each box of tiles costs £9.75. Work out the total cost. So if he's bought 200 tiles and there are 25 tiles in a box and each box costs £9.75, my first job is to work out how many of these boxes did he buy to get 200 tiles altogether. So to do that, I'm gonna take 200 and divide it by 25, and that's gonna tell me how many boxes he bought. So 200 divided by 25 is eight. So he bought eight boxes, and we know that each of those boxes cost £9.75. So we're gonna do £9.75, and times that by eight. Again, this is a calculator paper, so you're absolutely fine just to type that in your calculator, and that is 78 pounds. You can put it like that, or you can put it like that, it doesn't matter, okay? 78 pounds would be your answer. Question number 10. The graph shows information about the time in minutes a liquid has been cooling and the temperature of the liquid in degrees C. Question number A says, what is the temperature of the liquid at time two minutes? So you've got temperature on your y-axis and time going across your x-axis here. So if I want to know what the temperature was at two minutes, I'm going to get my ruler. I'm going to read up at two until I hit the graph and then go across. And that corresponds to a temperature of 80. So 80 would be my answer there. That must have been the temperature after two minutes. Pam recorded the time when the liquid had a temperature of 50 degrees C. What was that time? So we're doing exactly the same thing, but we're going the other way. So 50 degrees is here. Read across, hit that graph, and go down, and that corresponds to eight minutes. So it took eight minutes for it to get down to that temperature. Okay, Pam says that the temperature of the liquid drops more in the first three minutes of cooling than it does between time nine minutes and 12 minutes. Is Pam correct? Give a reason for your answer. So we're looking at the first three minutes, which goes from this point to this point. So that's how much it's gone down by in that time. And then between nine and 12, we can see that's dropped by much less. Now you did not need to give figures here, but if you did give, fig give figures, sorry, they did have to be correct. So we need to just say, yes, the graph has gone down by much more in the first three minutes than it has between nine and 12. Um, it's a much bigger drop. So we just need to say, is Pam correct? Yes, the graph is much steeper 
much steeper between all oh, between zero to three minutes and decreases by much more than from nine to 12. So you didn't actually need to say how much it had gone down by, but if you did, great, but then those figures needed to be correct. Um, but it was only one mark. So I think just to say, yeah, I've had a look at the graph and I can see it goes down by much more. Um, and we can see the graph is steeper there. That's absolutely fine. Question number 12, here are the first five terms of a number sequence. Write down the next two terms of this sequence. So we've got 45, 40, 35, 30, 25. So this is going down in fives. So the next term would be 20. And then the term after that would be 15. So 20 and 15. It then says a term of this sequence is minus five. Which term? Well, we're not far off being there. So I would probably just carry this on. Uh, 10, 5, and then 0, and then minus 5. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's the 11th term. So 11th is going to be my answer there. The nth term of a different sequence is given by the expression 4n add 3. Find the ninth term of this sequence. So 4n add 3 means the 4 times table add an extra 3. So if I write out the 4 times table, it would go 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and so on. But this sequence, that would be 4n, this sequence is 4n add an extra 3. So that would be 7 instead of 4 because we'd need to add 3. It would be 11 instead of 8 because we'd need to add 3. It would be 15. It would be 19. It would be um, 23. It would be 27 and so on. Okay, So this would be the sequence. And you could just do that and work out the ninth term. But the point of an nth term is that you can substitute the number you want in as n. So you're going to do 4 times 9 because you want the ninth number in the sequence and then add an extra 3. So that's 36, add 3 more and that's 39 for one mark. Okay, question number 14, we've got some algebra here. Simplify 3x add 5y add 2x minus 4y. Now we've got to collect like terms so I can say 3x add 2x that makes 5x. And I think most students would get that. And then you've got plus 5y minus 4y. And that makes 1y. Now what happens is a lot of students will get those two but then won't know whether to put a plus or a minus between them. So the key to this is the 5x is positive. So it would be plus 5x. And the 1y is positive so it would be plus 1y. But we don't need to put a plus out the front. We know if there's no sign there it is just a positive thing. So because 5 take away 4 got us to positive y, it's going to be 5x add 1y. Now you don't need to actually write the 1 um, because 1y is just y. So 5x add y would be my answer. y add 5x would be absolutely fine as well. It's exactly the same. And if you had put a 1 in front of either of those, it wouldn't lose you the mark. It's absolutely fine to do that. Okay, solving an equation next. Now when I solve equations, I like to put a dotted line where the equals is. And remember that what we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. So this is five lots of P in algebra. When we write things next to each other, it means they're timesing. And then we add on an extra seven, and that gives 22. So let's work backwards. I'm going to do the opposite of adding seven, which would be to take away seven. And if I take away seven, it's going to get rid of that and just leave me with five P. But if I take away 7 on the left-hand side, I've also got to take away 7 on the right-hand side, and that would leave you with 15. Okay, if 5 lots of P is 15, I don't want 5 lots of P. When we are solving, you are always just working out the value of the letter. So I'm going to divide this side by 5. I don't want 5 lots of P, I just want 1 lot of P. So dividing by 5, and also dividing this side by 5, P is equal to 3, and that would be your answer. And you can always substitute it back in and check. So 5 times 3 is 15, add 7, yes, that makes 22. So we're happy we've got that correct. Question number 16. There are only 5 blue cards, 2 green cards, and 4 red cards in a pack. Isabella is going to take at random 1 card from the pack. Write down the probability that Isabella will take a blue card. Well, blue, we've got 5 of them. 
So the probability of taking blue is 5 out of how many there are all together. So 5 add 2 add 4 is 11. So the probability of taking blue is 5 out of a possible 11 cards. Now for part B, Ken is going to throw a biased dice once. So biased means it's not fair. So normally with a dice, we'd expect it to land on um, each of the, so one, two, three, four, five, six, each of them would have a probability of one out of six, but here it's biased, so that means it's more likely to land on some numbers than others. The probability that the dice will land on a six is 0 0.3. What's the probability it will not land on a six? So probability always has to add up to one. So I don't know what the probability of landing on a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five is, but I know it must be the rest. So if the probability of landing on a six is 0 0.3, we would do one take away 0 0.3, and that means that the probability of not landing on a six is all of the rest that would add to make one. So 0 0.7 would be your answer there. Question number 18. This graph can be used to change between US dollars and British pounds. We've got dollars on the Y axis, and British pounds on the x-axis. Rosie bought a ring in the USA and she paid 345 US dollars. Work out in pounds the amount Rosie paid for the ring. So if it's 345 US dollars, we wanna go over here, go to 345, read across and go down, but it doesn't go up that high. So what we need to do is use different amounts. Now I think I would do 50, $50, let's find out how much that is. Go down, and for that I get 38. Now your answers might be slightly different to me here. There would be a range of acceptable answers. I'm just gonna do what I get, but you should be fairly close to me if you do it a different way. Okay, so I'm gonna write down that $50 is equal to 38 pounds, roughly. Okay, I'm roughly estimating. Now, $300 would be six times bigger than that. So I'm going to do 38 times by 6 to find out how many pounds that would be worth. So times that by 6, 38 times 6 is 228 pounds. And now I just need to work out what $45 is. So $45, if we go across, it's going to be in the middle of that square there. Hit the graph and go down. And let's say that's it's just below, it's between 34 and 35, but let's just go for, what should we say, £34.50. <laughs> let's go in the middle. I'm going to be, yeah, why not? Why not? £34.50. So then if I want $345, I just want those two added together. So I'm going to add these two things together, 228, add £34.50, and for that I get £262 and 50 pence. So that's my answer. Your answer might be slightly different, but it should be pretty close to that. There'd be a small range of answers. The only thing I'd say to be really careful for is avoid doing any measurements that are like quite small down here because it's just quite hard to read and it makes quite little difference. So ideally you want to go for as big a values as possible. So using kind of uh, 60, using 50 like I've done there, using 45. So we're trying to make the values as big as possible so that there's less room for error. Um, that would be my advice on that one. Okay, question number 20. Akhtar, Ben and Carl each have some money. Akhtar has £65. Ben has £100. And Carl has three £5 notes, one £20 note and some £10 notes, but we don't know how many. The mean amount of money per person is £80. How many £10 notes does Carl have? Okay, so if the mean is 80 that means they've added up all of their money, the total amount of all of their money, they've divided it by three and got 80. Whenever they give you the mean, you know they've added it all together and divided by how many there are. So if we know there are three people, that's why they've divided by three and got an average, a mean of 80. So what we can do here is work backwards. 80 times by three is 240 pounds. So that must be the total. The total amount of money must be 240 because there are three people and when I do 240 divided by three, I get 80. 
So let's add up how much we know is there. Akhtar has 65, Ben has 100, and Carl, he has three five pound notes, well that's 15, a 20 pound note, that's another 20, so 15 here, 20 here. So we know he's got 35, and then he's got some 10 pound notes, and that's what we're trying to work out. So without those 10 pound notes, if we add this together, we get 200 pounds without the 10 pound notes. So the difference, 240 take away 200 is 40 pounds. So 40 pounds would be our answer here in terms of how much value it is. But the question says, how many 10 pound notes does Carl have? And so that would be four 10 pound notes. So we did have to say four to get full marks there as your answer. Okay, question number 22. Here is a solid made from a square base pyramid and a cube. Each edge of the solid has length of six. So that's six, that's six, that's six, that's six, that's six. Everything is six. On the centimeter grid, draw the plan of this solid. So the plan is the view from above. View from above. So what would that look like from above? Well, it would look six wide and it would look six going back. So let's start by drawing that one, two, three, four, five, six in that direction. One, two, three, four, five, six in that direction. Same going down. So it's going to look like a square from above, but you are going to see that roof part. You are going to see that, but it's not going to have any depth, but you would see the lines. So from above, it would just look like that. You wouldn't necessarily see the point coming towards you from above you would just see the lines look a bit like a roof of a house or something like that so that would be my plan two marks for that okay question 24 andy cycles a distance of 30 kilometers at an average speed of 24 kilometers an hour before i go any further i'm going to draw my speed distance time triangle so speed distance time if I want distance, I would do speed times time. If I want speed, you'd cover that up and do distance divided by time. And again, if you want time, distance divided by speed. So there we go, that's really helpful. He then runs a distance of 12 kilometers at an average speed of that, work out the total time. So if we want time, we would cover up the T and it's gonna be distance divided by speed. So let's first look at his cycling. This is a bike, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> there we go. There's a bike. So we're going to do distance, which is 30, divided by his speed, which is 24. Now, I am going to use my calculator for this. 30 divided by 24 is 5 over 4. 5 over 4, 5 quarters, 1 and a quarter, that's quite key, or 1.25. Okay, good. We'll come back to that in a second. And then he's going to run. Uh, <laughs> oh dear oh no I've broken his leg anyway you get the idea maybe that way yeah that way there we go he's running um, and then we're going to do 12 kilometers an average speed of 8 so 12 divided by 8 is going to be 1.5 now those times are in hours you did distance in kilometers and you divided it by the speed in kilometers per hour so matching up the units the time would need to be in hours so we've got 1.25 hours and 1.5 hours now think very carefully 0.25 of an hour is not 25 minutes it is a quarter same as we've got here so an hour and a quarter one hour and a quarter is 15 minutes. So that's one hour and 15 minutes for that one. It's not 25 minutes. It's a quarter of an hour, which is 15 minutes. And then 1.5, again, that's not an hour and 50. It's an hour and a half. So one hour 30 for that. Adding these together then, how long did it take him all together? It is two hours and 45 minutes in total for three marks. Question number 26, Maisie knows that she needs three kilograms of grass seed to make a rectangular lawn five by nine metres. So we've got rectangular lawn, five metres, nine metres, which is 45 metres squared. Remember, we do base times height for area. And that needs three kilograms of grass seed. 
Grass seed is sold in two kilogram boxes. Maisie wants to make a rectangular lawn 10 by 14. Okay, so way bigger. Oh, that's terrible. 10 meters here and 14 meters here, which would be 140 meters squared. She's got five boxes of grass seed. Has Maisie got enough? Okay, so we know that three kilograms covers 45 meters squared. She wants to cover 140 meters squared. So how many kilograms would that be? Okay, so one kilogram covers 15 meters squared. I've got that by dividing by three, and there's lots of different ways you can do this question. This is just the way I've decided to do it. Every kilogram of grass seed covers 15 meters squared. So to get 140 meters squared, let's do 140 divided by 15, and that will tell us how many um, kilograms she needs. So that's 9.3 recurring. So 9.3 recurring kilograms. That's how much she needs. And she has five boxes, and there is two kilograms in each. So five times two is 10 kilograms. That's what she has. She has 10 kilograms. She needs 9.3 recurring kilograms. And um, so has she got enough? Yes, she has, she's got enough. Um, there's lots and lots of ways you can do that question. So if you did it in a different way, don't worry, but you do need to make sure you answer the question. So has Maisie got enough grass seed to make a lawn? And you say, yes, she needs 10 kilograms. No, she needs. 9.3 kilograms and has 10 kilograms. Perfect. Maisie opens the five boxes of grass seed. She finds that four of the boxes contain two kilograms and one of the boxes has only one kilograms in it. So four times two, that's eight. Add the extra one is only nine kilograms. Does this affect whether Maisie has enough grass seed to make her lawn? Um, yes, she needs 9.3 recurring kilograms um, and only has 9 kilograms. She does not have enough. There we go, so that changed your answer. Wonderful. Question number 28. Use these graphs to solve the simultaneous equations. So this line here is labelled with that equation. So that's the equation of that line. Same here, this line here is labelled y equals minus 2x. So that's the equation of that line. Now every single coordinate on this line makes this equation true. I'll show you what I mean. So if you were to take this coordinate, for example, up here, that is the coordinate minus 4, 8. That's that coordinate just up here. If you put minus 4 here, where the x is, because that's your x-coordinate, and you put 8 here, where the y is, because that's your y-coordinate, does 8 equal minus 2 times minus 4? Yes, it does. Now, every single coordinate on that line would make that equation true. But if you were to pick a random point, like 2, 2, it wouldn't work. 2 does not equal minus 2 times 2. So if a point lies on the line, it will make the equation true. It's x and y. And so if I would like to solve both equations, I'm just looking for a coordinate that solves both equations. And that's going to be here. I'm simply looking for the point where they cross because we know that that point lies on both lines. So it would make both equations true. Now at that point, it's minus 2, um, sorry, minus 2, 4. Minus 2, 4 is your coordinate there. Remember, along the corridor up the stairs, that's your x coordinate, that's your y coordinate. Therefore, x needs to be minus 2 and y needs to be 4. And that would make both of these equations work. And you could check by substituting them in, but you don't need to. For simultaneous equations, you're just looking for the point where both graphs cross. And then we have this, use this graph to find estimates for the solutions of the quadratic equation x squared minus 4x add 2 equals 0. So they're telling us here that this is the graph of x squared minus 4x add 2. And then they're saying, when does that graph, when does that exact equation equal 0? Now I want you to imagine that 
equaling zero is the same as crossing the floor, for example, this x-axis. That is where it equals zero. It's often called the roots um, and it's often called the solutions. So we're looking for the x-coordinates, just the x-coordinates, because we're trying to solve this equation and this equation has no y's in it. They're not asking you for coordinates. They're asking you for solutions. When does it equal zero? And so firstly, let's have a look here. That would be 0.6. And secondly, here, we would get 3.4. Those would be your answers for two marks. So 40 marks altogether on the paper. Hopefully that made sense. If you've got any questions at all about any of the questions, please just drop a comment below and I'd be more than happy to try and help you or go over things again or film a separate video just to go over more questions of that topic. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you guys next week for week 19.